and our guy, uh, Kenny Ortiz, who's the man who found SWV yeah. and, and Pharrell and the Neptunes. Um, he was telling me, hey, man, I got these girls. I can't, get them, I can't get them arrested. I can't get them signed, man. I can't get them a deal. And this at the time when TLC had changed up their image and was now crazy, sexy, cool. You know, they were incredible. They, they went from oh. that tomboy stuff yeah, yeah, to, yeah, to, the, to the hot women, right? Yeah. So, but SWV's look was kind of tomboyish and still hanging on to the, you know, Timbo's and yeah, yeah, Thursday. Yeah. You know, they were still kind of like Mary Jane it out. You feel me? Yeah, yeah. Because it was yeah. 1991, 1991. So, he said, I can't get these girls arrested. Uh, but he, but Kenny heard my voice and heard me singing and was like, yo, you are the guy that needs to work with these girls. And I was kind of shined him on. I was like, man, sign me as an artist. How about that? <laughs> yeah. you know? So I really wasn't letting him hear records on it at all, really. Um, but then one day he was like, yo, man, listen to these girls. And so he sent me a, a FedEx, a cassette of them. FedEx. And I remember hearing Coco's voice for the first time. And I was like, oh, shit. Like, wait a minute. This is some shit right here. I can, I can work with this voice. Uh, she was kind of all over the place and you could tell she wasn't being produced very well by whoever was producing her. She would be sharp on all these notes and then they would, they would just leave it. I was like, why did they leave that? But so I was like, the first thing I thought was I'm going to have to get her under control, but I think under control, she's going to be amazing. Um, that's the first thing I thought. And then I started thinking about it. I was like, well, you know what? I'll, I'll do it. Why not? Because they don't have a deal. If I get them a deal, I'll be the guy that's the main sound of yeah. these girls if I establish the sound. So that was my mindset going into it was like, well, they don't have a deal and I'm the, and he's telling me that I can kind of have control over what I'm doing. So I'm going to do it. So I turned in, I had this song called Right Here, uh, which you know, yeah. I gave them that. Uh, I did not give him Week on purpose because I was still trying to get that on Charlie Wilson. So I did not play Week for him at all. And we started recording. And then through a twist of fate, Kenny Ortiz was at a meeting in L.A. And uh, remember, I told you I worked for Jay King in Sacramento, right? Yeah. Well, there was this guy that used to work there. He was the, he would, he was the janitor. And he would clean up the building and shit. So he had stolen a tape that had my demo of Week on it. Me singing Week, the whole thing. He stole he it? Okay. <laughs> stole the tape. And so this particular day, Kenny is at the office in, in, in L.A. And he's walking through. And he hears Week. And he, he never heard that before, but he, he heard my voice. He knew and he, you. Because he, he knew my voice because of the Mark the Watch demos. I did all the demos. Yeah. So he's like, and he went over to this guy, Jeff, who used to be a janitor at J. King's thing, but now is an A&R guy at RCA. What? <laughs> yes. He had came up, he come up in the ranks. And so he goes, hold on, man. That sounds like Brian Alexander Morgan. And Jeff was like, that is Brian Alexander Morgan. So he's like, what is this? And so Kenny called me, he's like, yo, man, that's fucked up. You've been holding out on me. You know I'm trying to get these girls signed. Why haven't you played me this song? This is, re this is insane. I said, bro, because I'm trying to get that on Charlie Wilson or I want to do it on myself. I'm not really trying to give that song away. He's like, Brian, please, you got to come back to mix a couple more Martha records. Can I just pay you to record that song? And I gave in and I said, all right, man. So I recorded it. And that's the song that got them the deal, the record deal with RCA. Wow, but so he was there. He couldn't get them the deal, even though he worked there. He had to. It did, it, they, weren't, they weren't seeing it in as far as the imaging and the whole overall, the overall thing. Plus, they didn't have the songs yet. So now, all of a sudden, they got right here and week after I recorded it. Now they got some songs that showcase what she's all about. Okay. That sense the deal. So and that's, that's how SWV started. So and I think that the the thing is that at the, so what year was it that you that they that you, they auditioned to get the deal at RCA? Well, they never auditioned with me. Oh they, no no, I think they had tried to get the deal. Probably like ninety one. It had to be like 90, 90, 91, somewhere around in there. So it's just Mary that's out in that image. I mean, because ninety three is when all the Jade and right. all the other groups. So right, there wasn't right, that right. many girl no, groups. Jade around. is like ninety four. Jade is ninety four. Yeah, but I'm just saying that there weren't that there weren't. It wasn't a case where. No, all these only, T only TLC and En Vogue were like popping. Yeah, and, but they were very different types of En Vogue. Was totally different. Yeah, so Mary totally. J would be the only, you're right, Mary J would be their only measure of hip-hop and soul, in for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. 
Hip Hop Soul was Mary J, and that was the only standard at that moment. Absolutely. I can see why there might have been a pushback on, look, that's not what's out there right now. So Right, because TLC was blowing the hell up with their new sound and their new look, and it was absolutely gorgeous. You know, they were like women, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, long story short, uh, did that, and then I just started, write, I started writing directly for them, and that's how I wrote I'm So Into You. Yeah, so the, the thing about that that uh, debut album was that I looked and you did about nine. You, out of the 14 songs, you did about nine of them on, on yeah. it. I think it's seven. I think it's seven, but yeah. Okay. With a, well, it's, with a bonus cut. Yeah. Oh, the bonus one I'm, that, that mm -hmm. took it. There was, a, there was a bonus one in there. But for you at that point in time, when you're writing for them, did you think, man, I'm they're taking my spot? Did you, because, you, you know, you're... No, 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 because I didn't have a spot. <laughs> so this at this point, I'm like, okay, the Martha stuff didn't work like I thought it was going to. Now I'm just going to go full on into developing this this group with the voice with the with the voice that I had in my, in my hands. It's, it was an amazing voice to work with with Coco, and then the girls themselves with their blend, it was awesome. When they sang together, they sound just like on the record. So it's like this is easy. This is like easy, easy, easy. So. That's kind of what happened. Was, we just started working. And then they came to Sacramento, and that helped a lot because then I was in my own element. I wasn't in New York. Yeah. When I wrote I'm Swimming to You, I, we re-recorded re it in Sacramento even. So, and then we went back and recorded. We, I mean, we got recorded in New York and maybe right here. But, but uh, I'm Swimming to You, and I think, what else? A couple other things got recorded in Sacramento. By the time we did You're Always on My Mind, we were back in New York again. So when you did, um, so what was influencing the sound then? Because... If you're talking about 91 or so, you had Uptown with Jodeci, Mary, you know, with that type of sound. I mm. think Teddy had sort of moved away from, I think, yeah, the Guy album he was doing with Michael Jackson stuff. So there was, there seemed to have been a sort of, a, of I think Uptown was taking over with their hip hop soul um, and stuff with Kenny Green and intro. Mm -hmm. What was influencing the type of, not the writing, but the production of what you were doing for SWV. At that time, I just decided I wanted to create my own sound and stop copying those types of sounds. And that's how you got I'm Going to You, the most un-New Jack Swing record ever. It's straight 16s. There's none of that at all. Okay? I took all that. I was like, I'm going to do me. So that, and then all my ballads, I wanted them to sound like me. So anything which opens the album is a shot across the bow saying there's a new sound happening. And it's not those other things. It's its, its own thing. It's a Midwest thing. It's not an East Coast thing. It's a Midwest boy. Wow. Yeah. That comes from Stevie and Charlie and all that stuff. And so, but I love, and it couldn't, you could, I mean, right here, the first right here is the last bastion of that. That's kind of new Jack-ish. Yeah. And that's fine. Uh, but I knew that once they came to me and was in my home turf, I was trying to do me. I wasn't yeah. concerned with what was happening on the radio at that time. Because and I was like- you were, you were in the Bay Area where um, Foster McLaren had their own influence with the Tonys yeah. and, and, well, and yeah, both. Sure. So did, and they, you know, the, the Tonys had, I think the is it the carnival one that was somewhat New Jack ish or so. Yeah. Well, was there not a sense of okay, are we leaning not, from not that? so Those are my friends, by the way. So I was certainly not going to be. And plus, I came in the door through that. I certainly wasn't going to go back. That would be like going backwards to me because I came yeah. in through Club Nouveau and that whole thing. So I was definitely trying to do a new thing when I did my thing at that point. That's four years later. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So. It's just was, it was just my time to do me is to be the best way for me to describe it. And that's exactly what it sounds like, you know. At the, at the time that you did that, where you, you finished the album, did you think this is going to be a smash or what was your thoughts? Could you tell? And, and, and no, I did... no, not at all. I didn't like the album cover. I didn't like the logo. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I was like, and then the first, I like the, the first video was cool, but um, I hated the videos to week it was horrible. <laughs> I was like, why are they trying to sabotage my girls? This is bad. <laughs> but you know what? The power of the songs themselves saved them and literally took them into the stratosphere. When I'm so into you broke, um, I think that was really, really like 
a shot across the bow to the whole industry. Like it's a new girl in town, some new girls in town. And they have whole different styles and voices that it's their own thing. Mm -hmm. And we certainly knew it wasn't Mary and they knew it wasn't in Vogue and they damn sure knew it wasn't TLC. So it was like, who is this? Yeah. You know, when she said, boy, there you go. It was like, oh, 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 <laughs> whoa, what's going on? Yeah. You feel me? And so, and, and I wrote all that, like, that's just like right out of my head into her voice. That was the beautiful thing about the relationship. It was like, I could, I could sing it and she could sing it back to me. Yeah. Verbatim. So that was how it worked. You know what I mean? It, it was, it was like channeling really yeah. for me and Coco. I would do it as it was supposed to be done. She could do it and mimic it. And that's it. That's how it worked on week. All of them. She sang every single ad lib on my demo. All, I did all the ad libs the way that they were supposed to be on the demo. Wow. There's no, there's no improv. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe to the channel, but most importantly to press the notification bell so that you can be notified when we do have a new interview loads to come, but thanks a lot for watching. Mm.